Hello friend, this is a minimalist cleaning routine for my everyday cleaning stuff. Yes, we clean every day. Three young kids in the house, home all day, demands an everyday <laughs> cleaning schedule. My journey as a minimalist has evolved my cleaning routine. It's down to 20 minutes a day, which is so nice. And toss in a couple of tidy ups and it's less than an hour every day to maintain a clean minimalist home. But <laughs> that said, this is not a clean with me, my house is already clean video. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the mess. This is an everyday, real life, this is what our house looks like day to day mess. And we just hit the reset button. That's what we call it, hitting the reset button two, three times a day. We tidy up whatever messes we made and then we do a cl quick clean together. Um, something that uh, chores that my kids are able to do every day and then I also do a clean. We have three little kids and we homeschool. We have messes all the time. Uh, there's always a mess or two or 10 <laughs> messes in the house at any point on any given day. And my daily cleaning routine or flow goes through three phases. It's um, tidy up, which is basically hitting the reset button on our stuff a surface clean where we focus on floors and kitchen counters. And then the third one I call my quick cleans. And that changes day to day based on what needs to happen, like washing the dog bowls or laundry or wiping the sliding glass door, or cleaning a bathroom, whatever needs to happen that fills in the gaps between my weekly cleaning routine. This, is, this video is part of a series that I'm gonna do. This is focusing on the everyday cleaning. I'm also gonna share a video on the weekly cleaning, the monthly cleaning and the seasonal cleaning. If we haven't met before, allow me to be the first to welcome you to our community channel here. My name is Erica Lucas, and on every one of my videos, you are going to find a community in the comments section that's going to offer you support and tips and kindness. So you can count yourself among friends here. My daily cleaning routine is simple and basic by design. <laughs> I need it to be easy. A year ago, it was not easy. It wasn't even a thing. I didn't even do a daily cleaning or a reset every day. We just had clutter everywhere. There was just too much stuff. So a daily cleaning or even a weekly cleaning was stressful and not enjoyable like it is now. We had so much clutter everywhere and now we still have messes, but I don't see it as clutter anymore. It's something the kids made or did or built and it just needs to be put back into its proper home when they're done playing with it or it's an art mess, or it's a kitchen mess from cooking. It's a, it's a simple mess that's easy to clean that was intentional. It's not, it wasn't, it's not just stuff all over the place that I have to move out of the way to clean now. The first phase of my daily cleaning routine is a tidy up, a reset button. It takes 10 minutes or less, and my kids help me do it every single time. And we do this two, three times a day where we hit the reset button and tidy up. I don't clean two to three times a day, but we do this phase two to three times a day. So, uh, you know, at the before lunch usually, before dinner, and then before bedtime. That's usually how we flow um, to clean up any toys or messes or art projects or whatever it is that's out that needs to be put away. I, you know, I make messes too. I have a work pile at the table or on a counter or in my in my office space, or I've <laughs> just left the kitchen a mess and I need to. To reset that, I need to put things in the dishwasher or put the dishes away. I need to put things where they belong as part of tidy up. When things don't have a home, clutter builds fast. My office closet right here is a perfect example of this. When things don't have a home, they become a situation. <laughs> they become clutter and a mess and it's hard to find things. I have not organized this office yet and I know the categories in my head but I don't know where they are in that closet, like uh, paying bills, correspondence, stuff for my business, uh, long-term papers, short-term papers. They have homes in this closet, but not a specific thing that I can just go in, get what I need and get out. I have to hunt for things. I need to situate this closet. It, if you've watched Friends, you know Monica's secret closet <laughs> where she like stashes all her stuff. That's what this office closet is like for me. <laughs> like my Monica closet. So when we tidy up, one really simple trick that I picked up in the last year is to use a basket or a laundry basket or a bag or something 
that you can just put things that belong on a different floor or a different room. So when you're doing one room, what doesn't belong in there goes in the basket. You move to the next room. What doesn't belong there goes in the basket. And you're putting things away while you're moving things to the right spot, to the right homes. So that makes tidying up very quickly. And then I just put things at the bottom of the steps. So the next time that I go upstairs, I put them where they belong. This part of the video is brought to you by Blinkist. Blinkist has an online library of nonfiction books that you can read or listen to on your phone, your computer, your Kindle. Blinkist is an app and it gives you 15 minute summaries of nonfiction books. The team at Blinkist summarizes all the key points from thousands of books. I add recommendations that you guys give me, titles that interest me, and I collect them in my Blinkist library in the app on my phone. And I give a listen to the summaries while I'm cleaning each day or each week. And then I buy the full book if I want more. Some nonfiction titles I like to buy in hardcover so I can take notes and keep the book for a long time. And some I'm good to just read on my Kindle because I don't expect to take a lot of notes. And the blinks on Blinkist are helping me decide which format of the book I want to buy for reading the entire book. The first 100 people to go to my link in the description box get a free unlimited access to the full version for an entire week to check it out. You can also get 25% off a full membership. Okay, so the second phase of my cleaning routine I call surface cleaning, where we focus on the floors and the kitchen counters. And so what that means is if I've already tidied and put things where they belong, I just actually need to clean. Sometimes it's cleaning the dishes, putting them in the dishwasher, um, putting things, uh, you know, scrubbing the counters and then the floors get a daily vacuum either by me or the kids or both of us because when little kids help you still have to do the work <laughs> we have two handheld vacuums one is for carpet spot cleaning which i use on the steps or to spot treat any areas on our rugs and the other hand handheld back is for hardwood floors and it's great to just do like a little bit of like the ranger hair that happens <laughs> in a corner. I can just use the handheld back real quick or I can use it on the steps or just kind of in between vacuums. This is really good for that. So I don't have to drag out the upright vacuum. And I say drag out the upright, upright vacuum, but this thing is light. <laughs> it is made for hardwood floors. It is a bagless vacuum. I love that feature. And it just, and the, the, the vacuum part swivels and gets into the nooks and crannies. I love this thing. I use a steam mop to mop the hardwoods and I just spray my method wood cleaner and let the steam mop heat up and just go over the floors that way and it makes them nice and shiny. I just follow the grain in the wood and they look awesome when it's done and it takes like no time at all. I do not steam mop every day. I steam mop weekly and as needed during the week. I use this microfiber mop to spot wipe up a spill or clean around the dog's bowl. It was a really handy mop in the summertime because the kids would come in from the pool and there'd just be a couple of drips that didn't get caught by the towel that they're supposed to dress on. <laughs> the third phase of my daily cleaning routine is what I call my quick cleans, like laundry, wiping the sliding glass door, washing the dog's bowl, sweeping the porch, or maybe a quick clean of a bathroom that needed it in between my weekly cleaning for bathrooms. Uh, the steam mop might be an area where if I don't know the kids spill some flour because they were helping me cook then I have to get the steam mop out to finish the cleanup job <laughs> during the week um, but I what I mop weekly but I have the steam mop as needed during the week videos this video is the first in a series of cleaning videos that I'm going to share over the next month I'm going to focus on my daily, weekly, monthly, and seasonal cleaning. I'll share the tools that I use and how I do it and why it's simpler now as a minimalist because things aren't in the way anymore. It is so fast and easy to clean. Our weekly cleaning routine is next in the series and I will share that here once it's been published. And I say our weekly cleaning routine because it is a team effort. All five members of my family are expected to clean every week on Saturday mornings. <laughs> Everybody has a list of chores or things that need to be done on a weekly basis. It takes us about two hours every Saturday morning to work as a team of five to get the house clean. And we do a lot on that weekly clean. I just don't want to spend that much time every day cleaning. I just push it all into Saturday mornings and have a crew as my family and we just, we knock it out. We do 
deep cleaning is needed. We vacuum under the beds, we mop the floors. Um, everybody has a tool, a job, and a list, and we go at it for two hours. Thanks for coming along with me today. Here's the latest video, and I will add the weekly cleaning video here. I'd be honored if you subscribed to our community here and stick around for more videos about making life simple.